Every night we start the meditation with that chant on thoughts of goodwill. And you notice it begins with goodwill for yourself. Some people feel embarrassed about this, but it's based on an important principle. You can't feel goodwill for other people if, if you can't feel goodwill for yourself. This is where it has to start. Once you remind yourself of your desire for happiness, and that desire underlies all your actions, that puts the meditation in perspective. Because the question is asked, what kind of happiness? Where are you going to find it? What kind of happiness is going to satisfy you? What kind of happiness qualifies as true happiness? These are the questions that the meditation is going to address. And how are you going to find that happiness? A lot of people have problems with the teachings on karma, but essentially this is what underlies the whole project we're undertaking here, is the belief that what we do is going to make a difference. We're not sure about the extent that what we do will make a difference in the world outside, but in the world of our experience, what we do shapes everything. And if we can train our minds, it will make a big difference in our lives. Because after all, when you're asked to believe in the principle of karma, what are they asking you to believe in? One, you're responsible for your actions. It's not some outside force like some god or the influence of the stars acting through you. You make your choices, you're responsible for them. Two, the quality of your choice comes from the quality of the intention underlying it. And the results of the action will depend on the quality of that intention. In other words, that's based on a principle that's under your control. principle that you can learn to master. There's really noth nothing difficult to believe in these principles. In fact, the principles that you want to believe. Otherwise, your happiness is totally outside of your control, dependent on other factors. Or else that there's no pattern at all to cause and effect, all of which would make life pretty hopeless. But if you're convinced that what you do makes a difference, then it makes a lot of sense to sit down here and meditate. So you focus on your breath. Breath comes in, you know it's coming in. When it goes out, you know it's going out. As you do that, you have to bring some mental factors to the breath. First one is mindfulness, just keeping the breath in mind. Remind yourself, this is where you want to stay. And make this your frame of reference. You can forget about the world outside for the time being. Focus on this world here, the world of your breathing, the world of your immediate experience in the body. Make that your frame of reference. Thoughts that deal with other things, put them aside for the time being. It's not that we're irresponsible, it's simply that the mind needs some time for itself, some time when it can put down all the cares and responsibilities of the outside world, so it can get itself into shape. So mindfulness here means just being with the breath in and of itself, remembering to stay here. The next quality is alertness. In other words, you actually know what's going on. You know when the breath is coming in, you know when the breath is going out. You know when it's comfortable or not. This is important. If the breath isn't comfortable, it's going to be hard to stay with it. So a lot of the meditation revolves around this one issue right here, is learning how to be comfortable with the breath. You can focus on the sensation of breathing any spot in the body, where it's easy to know now the breath is coming in, now the breath is going out. And choose a spot where it feels comfortable to be centered. It can be the tip of the nose, the middle of the head, base of the throat, the chest, the abdomen. It 
When you find a spot that you like, then allow the breath of that spot to feel comfortable. Comfortable coming in, comfortable going out. But no tension building up with the in-breath, and no holding on to tension or pushing out with the out-breath. Just allow the breath to come in and go out in a way that feels really good. The third quality you bring is ardency. In other words, you're really focused on this. You pay attention. What this means is that when you're with the breath, you try to be as sensitive as possible to how the breathing feels. The more sensitive you are, detect the slightest little bit of tension or tightness and work through it, then the more comfortable the breath becomes, the more absorbing it becomes. It feels really good just sitting here breathing. You can start exploring this aspect of what it means to have a body, what it means to sense a body from the inside. You can play with the way you breathe in terms of its rhythm, in terms of its texture, whether it's deep or shallow, fast or slow, heavy or light. There's lots of room for experimentation. And when you get really sensitive to the breath, you begin to realize that it's a whole body process. Your whole nervous system is involved in each in-breath and each out-breath. You can think of the breath coming in and out through the whole body, down through the nerves, out to every pore. If you find yourself slipping away from the breath, then ardency means coming right back as soon as you notice that you slipped away. And try not to get discouraged. It's common in the meditation that you find yourself suddenly someplace else, thinking about things in the past, things in the future. And don't worry about how you got there. Just drop it and come back to the breath. No matter how fascinating or how, or how important that other thought may seem to be right now, you can think about it later. Right now it's time to get in touch with your breathing. And you find that with practice, you catch yourself more and more quickly until you get to the point where you can actually sense the mind getting ready to leave the breath before it goes. And you just breathe in good and deep in a way that feels really gratifying to the body. And you find your mindfulness gets reestablished. So these are the qualities you bring to the breath. Mindfulness, keeping the breath in mind. Alertness, being alert and sensitive to the breathing. And ardency is trying to make that sensitivity even more refined, more continuous. So as we focus on the breath, it's not that we're just getting the breath. We're also developing good qualities in the mind, because these are the qualities we need in all our activities. The ability to be mindful, to be alert and to really be intent on what we're doing. And it's these qualities that allow us to be more and more sensitive to how the principle of action operates in the mind, not only what we do and say, but also what we think. You get more sensitive to your intentions, you become more sensitive to your actions and the results. And this allows you to get more and more skillful in how you negotiate life. You can compare the meditation to getting physical exercise. You don't wait until your mindfulness is really strong before you go down to get exercise. You take what you've got, and you work with it. The same with your body. You don't wait till your body's strong before you start exercising. You, if you have a weak body, you exercise your weak body, and it gets stronger through the exercise. When you've exercised, it doesn't mean you're strong only in the gym or healthy only in the gym. You take that healthy body out, and you can do all kinds of work that you couldn't do before, because you're stronger, healthier. And the same with developing qualities in the mind. As you work with them, as you, uh, staying with the breath, and when you negotiate other issues in life, you find that you've got a stronger mind, more resilient, clearer. 
And you also have the skill of learning when and when not to think. For most of us, our minds are constantly thinking. It's like a TV set that's left on all day long, sometimes all night long as well. And no wonder we know no peace. Or you can compare it to a knife that you use to cut things all day long without ever sharpening it, without ever looking after it. The knife is going to get dull. But if you know how to give the mind a space to be quiet and think about just one thing, the breath, that allows it to rest and to get its bearings. And then when the time comes to think, it's like a knife that's been sharpened. You see an issue that has to be thought about and chop, go right through it. Because the knife is sharp and the person using the, using the knife is strong. So these are important skills. Developing your mindfulness, alertness, developing your intentness. Learning to gain some control over your mind's thinking processes so that it thinks when you want it to think and it stops and is quiet when you don't need it to think. Give it a chance to rest. Once the mind is more under your control, then the whole issue of the happiness that you're looking for in life becomes more manageable. Because the major factor that's going to shape that happiness is the mind. And when it's in better shape, more under your control, then it's not a traitor to your happiness. So many times the mind seems to undermine whatever potential we have for happiness because it goes off thinking about things that are detrimental and you can't seem to keep it under control. But if you develop these qualities of mindfulness, alertness, and ardency, the mind is more under your control and it gets more skillful in how it manages the issues of life. In this way, that desire we have for a happiness that's really true and reliable becomes more and more realistic because we have the tools, we have the skills that are needed. Because after all, it depends on us. We can't wait for the stars to deliver us happiness. We can't wait for some outside spirit to deliver us happiness. We discover it's something that we can work towards through our own efforts. Through the skills that we develop, being generous, being, being virtuous, meditating. These are the skills that bring some rhyme and reason to our lives. and allow us to take seriously that desire we all have deep down inside. We want to be truly happy. The mind wants peace. The mind wants security. These are things that it can work towards, things that it can bring about if it develops these skills. So give yourself to the meditation. We've got an hour that we're sitting here. It's rare that you have a whole hour just to sit and watch your breathing. Allow the mind to have the sense of settling into the present moment, feeling at home with the present moment, not being a constant stranger to the present moment. Using the breath not only to allow the body to feel good in the present, but also to develop some good mental habits. whose rewards will carry us beyond the present moment. Toward the happiness that we want.